<coughs> Alright, I'm going to be doing a VOD review for uh, this D.Va player, Hadal. And I believe he said this is at around 3400 SR. So let's go ahead and just leap into it. Yikes. Okay, so off the bat, um, that was a really, really bad synergy between the tanks on this team. So, so when you're a D.Va player and you're playing with a Rhine, um, there's, there's pretty much two things that you want, there, there's two ways you can go about playing it, right? So you can play with your Rhine, and you can play like the old school, like, early, or... Er, when was this? Like, yeah, like last season, Overwatch League, well, back when Rhine Diva was meta, like the Diva where you play with the Reinhardt, and then there, the other way you can play is to go off on flanks and harass. Um, so if you're gonna play with your Reinhardt like this, um, there's no point using your entire DM at the same time that your Rhine is shielding, uh, because obviously you're just doubling up. So, so. So what you what you want what you want to do is either use DM before your Rhine, let your Rhine shield, and then let your DM recharge while your Rhine's shielding, or what I would do since you're going this is just the very start of the game, uh, and you don't know the composition of the team you're going up against. Uh, what you should be doing is you should let your Rhine shield first, and then when if his shield breaks, you use your DM, let your Rhine uh, use that time to recover his shield. So here you're you're DMing at the same time as the Rhine is Rally shielding, and so this is the worst possible scenario because not only is his shield his shield still t takes some damage and then you eat some stuff, but while he's holding it, it's not recharging. So his shield is like in this weird state where it's like half, like it's like it's at like you know not full health, but it's not recharging, and you're running out of DM. And then he gets hooked here. So as soon as you saw, yeah, like if if you're going up against the enemy hog and you're on Diva, you have one job. Your job is to DM every hook in that game. Just make the hog. The hog will switch eventually. Um, if you DM like three or four hooks, the hog, if he has any brains, really just should should switch. Um, so here, you actually see him get hogged, and your booster was up. Um, so you could have just boosted in with him and used, you know, the last little bit of DM that you had to try to eat that shot um, but unfortunately it doesn't work and he dies so and then because now he died while he still had like a thousand shield now you get DMEC because you don't have a shield to play around so this is like the worst possible synergy between the two tanks that there could have been He's just gonna die here. Okay, so your Hanzo gets hooked off the bat. Um, again, you have one job on D.Va when you're playing against Hog, and that's DM every hook. Um, so. Yeah, so you you should be scouting out where wh like whether the hog is main or whether he's in this left room and whichever side he's in, like don't be afraid to just like get up there and get in his face because you can eat most of his damage. And remember, he only has five shots before he has to reload. A lot of times, hogs will actually just stop shooting you after you eat like one or two of their shots because they don't want to use up all their shots. Um, so your Hanzo gets hooked here. Luckily, your Mercy, he actually rests that. And... But now your Rhine's dead. So again, you're DMing through his shield. I don't know why... I don't know why you're doing that, because uh, that completely defeats the purpose. Either let him shield, and then when it's about to break and he puts it down, then you use your DM to let him recharge his shield. Um, or shield before and tell him to keep his shield down. 
a DM before and tell him to keep his shield down so that then once you're out of DM he can put his shield up. Dive the core, but you're Ryan and your soldier already dead. Again, you're shielding while he has it. You're DMing while he has his shield up. Um, or while you could have just let his shield eat most of that whole hog and then DM'd once it went down. And you ult here because I'm assuming because you know the game is about to be over. But this is that that this is also really bad. So okay, so let's let's take a look at the at the street oh at the overall strategic picture here, right? Um, so. Your team is approaching down main, right? And they're set up here on high ground. So this is this is probably the worst way that you could have engaged this. Um, what you should have done is gone left and then gone up and cleared the high ground before coming down. But in any case, um, so here. So the enemy nano visor already kills two people. Right. So this team fight's over. It's at 99%. So what you should have done here is not... You shouldn't have... <clears throat> so you, your mech is actually... How much health did you have on your mech? Yeah, so you still had about 400 health on your mech. And the enemy is actually... They're all pushed off the point. They're not even aware that you're there. You're actually starting to cap if you see the little percentage bar, right? What you should have done is got gone to the back of the point. <clears throat> um, like, just hide out right around here, right? And then while the enemy is all walking off point, when it's about when that when that overtime bar is about to is about to you know time out, just step onto the point right here, or boost on and then boost back off, and then boost on and boost back off. Just keep stalling for that, and you have bomb right. So you have a whole new mech to use, right? So you do that. And then when they eventually, you know, they realize, oh, someone keeps triggering overtime. They turn around, they come over here, they start trying to shoot you. Boost up to the high ground. D you expend your whole DM. Jump down on the other side. Bomb, right? And then, I don't know, like, use hard cover. Get your mech back. Keep stalling out. You could have stalled this, per this point out for another good 20, 30 seconds, maybe. Right? And at that point, your entire team, that's more, that's, that's enough time in overtime for your entire team to regroup and come back. Um, you could also have just called out for your round to switch to ball, come back, cause even more disruption and distraction. You could have easily, easily, th this is still a winnable game. This is absolutely a winnable game. And actually, if you look at your team's ults, right? Your Ryan you shatter, which is unfortunate. Um, but you're coming back with nano and visor, right? Soldier runs back fast, he doesn't have to swap. Ana has nano, so she shouldn't swap even though she can. Um, yeah, and honestly you have enough stall time that your entire team can come back regardless of how slow their character is. You could have re-engaged this with all six of you with the nano visor. And what is the other, wh the other team, wh what else do they have? They don't have, they're not gonna have trends. They just blew five volts on this team fight, right? Or four ults, so they have nothing. They're gonna be able to molten core, which you can eat, and then that's that's a winning team fight right there, right? So this game was far from over, but the fact that you didn't recognize that and wasted your bomb here is uh, is pretty bad. So it's like it's like things like that, like game knowledge things, that make the difference between a plat or a diamond and, or and a master and a GM, you know. So let's keep watching here. This round ends here, I think. Yeah, I'm just dying before you get your mech back. Alright, 
Alright, so let's fast forward. Activating the barrier. Round two. Okay, so you swap the Sigma. And you've got Reaper and Genji. Okay, so... And Ryan Sigma. So your, your comp is, is better at brawling than theirs is. They have a long range poke comp, a pick comp, and you have a brawl comp. Um, unfortunately, your Mercy gets picked immediately, so... Uh, that's pretty much a lost team fight, actually, and then your line dies. At this point, since you didn't cap, if you so here, if you'd cap that point fully, um, it would have been okay for all the rest of you to stick around and stall, and get maybe like I don't know, like five, seven percent on the point. You, but you never capped, and they dropped. At this point, all of you need to die. Just die. Like there's no point fighting here. There's no point for your honor to heal because it's just feeding the moral charge. And there's and there's no point for you to be backing up because you're not gonna get out of here alive. Um, yeah, so all the Reaper, the Genji, all of you should have either gotten out or died. And I, yeah, you're gonna get staggered here. I told you you weren't gonna get out. Um, and unfortunately, your Mercy actually boosted back in, so she's gonna get staggered as well. And I don't know. This looks no, more like a, a game in like plat than uh, a 3400 game. Okay, so your tank switched to Hog. Hog Sigma's is fine here. So your, your your hog gets their gets their signal, which is really good. Now you're gonna push the nano. You should not have fluxed that at all. I don't know what you were thinking there. Um, that was a complete and absolute waste of flux. Okay, so look at this team fight. Right, the nano is understandable because you're actually low, right? So from your honest perspective, or actually she nated you, so I don't know why she, she probably shouldn't have nanoed that actually. So you already got a pick on the sigma. Which is pretty much a team fight win. Um, here, if what I would have called for my team is if they use any ults, then we start ulting back. Um, but otherwise, you can you can just win the fight without in the neutral because you're up 65 and they have no sig. Um, so, so the fact that she nanoed you here is already kind of iffy. Um, but it actually ends up being fine because the Tor bolts. But for you to flux that is questionable at best because the soldier's already dead too. So this is a six v four, a six v four with a nano and sigma. Um, yeah. So you're gonna flux. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna feel cool because you're killing everyone. Um, but ultimately. What did that accomplish? Oh wow, and they actually turned it around. Damn. Yeah, so now you're in like a weird limbo where you've capped, but they're still fighting. The other team actually needs to regroup here. This is uh, it's kind of a throw on their part. Unfortunate. Yeah, the hog gets staggered, which is really, really bad. Genji blades and forces trans out, right? And you've already you've almost built a flux here. So you know you right now your win condition is just flux their team and they've got nothing to counter it. 
Uh, unfortunately, though, half your team dies here. Uh, so looking at this, I know right now you're probably like, oh, like, their whole team is like purple and low, right? Like, this is so winnable. This is not winnable for you. Because um, everyone on your team that has ults is dead. Half your team is already dead. Um, yeah, and you know that they have the rock and the hook, right? So there's two there's two CCs available to the other team for them to interrupt your ult, and there's no one to cover for you um, by like interrupting or blocking that CC, and there's no one left alive to really distract them from CCing you either. So it's a tough call, but yeah, I would I would probably would have held my flux here. Because you, the trans is out. You know next fight you can flux and you're gonna get confirmed kills. Um, so you get hooked out of it. And now... Yeah, and the team fight is lost. And now you don't have the flux for the next fight. So that's a tough call to make. Um, I can't really say with 100% certainty that I would have held that flux either. But... It's always important to look back on these things and you know figure out like oh like, was it the right call to flux there? Um, and watching the replay, you should have been able to determine that that wasn't the right call. Your mercy got nanoed and pulled off a res. That really doesn't matter at all because your whole team's dead still. Okay, but you guys turned it around, so. Um, yeah, ultimately that actually worked out fine. You're gonna die on the Torb. Yeah. Back. This is kind of a clusterfuck of a fight. It's really hard to determine what and what is the right call here. Um, so the mercy doing that is actually the dumbest fucking thing I've. Yeah, like she got a rock thrown at her and a hook thrown out, and she is sheer luck, just pure luck on her part that she didn't get hit by either of those, and that halt got interrupted, and that res got interrupted. Um, that's like that's relying on the enemy team to mess up their abilities, which they happened to do this time, um, but was a terrible decision otherwise. I'm pretty sure your Ana actually meant to um, nano the hog and missed. Okay, so she... Oh, okay, that was actually a deliberate nano from your Ana. Okay, so I get that that worked, happened to work out, but that was that was a terrible call by your Ana and your Mercy. I don't know what m nanoing Mercy accomplishes, uh, because it has absolutely nothing to do with whether she gets her res off or not. Like, yeah, she gets damage reduction, but that's not important. Um, what's important is that any CC will interrupt that res, and then you have a nanoed... Mer you have a, you've, you've wasted nano by mercy by nanoing someone who's just going to sit there after having her res interrupted in the middle of point. Um, yeah, so that was pretty bad play, but it worked out. 
And then you land a pretty nice flux here. Um, I think you should have stayed up there when you got up there with your ult. Like, why not just stay up here? Because if you look, if you look at the situation, right? If the Sig tries to shield you by throwing his shield up, then he dies to your teammates. Um, if he blocks, if he shields your teammates, like your hog down there, then you just kill him by shooting him from above. Um, and you could just sit up here and poke away at everyone, uh, and it's it's much harder for them to get to you than it is uh, if you're just on the ground. Okay, they waste flux there. Yeah, and then you guys win this round. So, sheer luck that the uh, the Mercy Res actually managed to get off. Score. Ready for battle. So you're playing way, 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 way too aggressively here. Right? You're playing like a Reinhardt would, um, except you're on Sigma, right? So, um, first off, just jumping in the middle of, he of here and throwing your shield out for all six of the other team to shoot. Like your shield melted, right? It just disappeared instantly. Um, so, and now, like if. Yeah, there's no there's no reason to do that you, when you could just sit here, use hard cover, and keep poking around and shooting and cons conserving your shield for later use. Because right here, if that hog was any good, he would have hooked you right here, right there. He could just hook you. That's a free kill. Uh, Cause the Ana's right there, the t the turret set up. Um, he, Ryan can turn and charge you. Likely, you would have just gotten slept by the Ana, and then you would have been killed, or everyone would shoot you when you got hooked, and you would have died instantly. Um, yeah, and then here, like, why are you stepping on point? It's not even unlocked yet. It's unlocked now, but that's when you should have stepped on point with your full health and your full shields up, right? So that's that's the that's the deadline for when you need to get somebody on point. Um, but now you've got no resources. Your grasp is down. Uh, your shield's down. You're at half health, and your Ana had to nade you to keep your to keep your health up already. Um, and look at the other team. The other teams. Set up on point, they're fine. Yeah, and yeah, you just overextended and ran out of resources and you died. If only the answers were simple. So here is where I would have entertained the idea of switching to Reinhardt. Um, just because this map, and specifically this map, is a very Rhine favorite map. Okay, so your other tank actually switches to Rhine. So Rhine Sigma here beats Rhine Hog any day of the week. So I know that when you get nanoed, like you feel like there's pressure for you to achieve something, but that doesn't mean you just have to instantly blow your ult at the closest thing you see. Okay. Um, most, like a lot of the times when you get nanoed, um, like you have to make a call, did my Ana nano, like was it a good nano, right? And if it's not a good nano, 
then just like you can play a little more aggressively than you normally would because that that damage reduction and the damage boost obviously but um you don't have to like go out and start ulting or like just int you know like just play how you would normally play except slightly more aggressive So, kind of unfortunate. You actually could have killed that Torb there if you'd landed that shot. Um, right over here. Um, and then that's actually a really good Torb bolt. Yeah, and I- oh, okay, actually, I didn't see that the first time. So your McCree actually gets the people in the flux um, with the High Noon, which is huge. Okay, yeah, and you guys win the fight. Um, yeah. I actually think a lot of these, uh, su your supports are, are being a little bit wasteful with their ultimates. Um, because that was an expensive team fight for you guys. You used everything you had. And now you're I'm 99% sure you're gonna lose this next team fight. Nice block here. Dude. And, um, yeah, because you guys used everything all at once in the last team fight, there's nothing to win this no, one. My ultimate is charging. Activating the barrier. The equation. What was that equation? As far as your Sigma play specifically, um, I'm just noticing that a, uh, a lot of your, your mouse one clicks, uh, you're hitting people with a splash and you're not actually direct hitting them. So, it's just a little thing, but I would really work on... You, you, you seem to be playing with like a, like a hit scan aim when Sigma's a projectile hero. And so the orbs are still, you know, they're still... They still explode and do splash. But the direct hit does a lot more damage. It does 110 damage each time, whereas the splash is a lot less. It's like, you know, like 50 damage. So I would try to work on really getting the, the timing of those orbs down to make sure that you're landing direct hits each time. Victory. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of a strange game. Um, again, it seems more to me like this is like a plat, like a low plat game than a 3400 game, but... Um, you want the the you guys really shouldn't have won the second round. Um, that was just like a hail mary play by your mercy to res, and somehow both the rock and the hook missed, and she managed to get it off. And then your flux won you that round. Um, but yeah, there was definitely a team difference here. This uh, the other team is way is is was much much better. Um, Yeah, so the thing I would look at the most um, is what I said Routing. Well, at the end of this first round, right here. Um, just remember what I said about how this ult was wasted and how you could have stalled for a lot longer. Because uh, again, you had this mech. You've got the mobility, you've got the DM, and then you have another mech, and then and a fresh kit from that one as well. Um, and you had all that time to stall for your team to come back with an ult advantage, with like nano visor. You know, you could have you could have just like pressed tab and be like, oh, my team's gonna have nano visor. Um, yeah, and then and also called for your Ryan to switch to ball real quick, and something like that I think could have turned this round around.
And then, if that had been the case, you would have won after the second round, right? So it's like it's like one little mistake like this that turns the game completely around. Um, so yeah, just just think about things like that. Uh, as far as your diva play from the beginning, um, yeah, just learn to alternate your shielding and your DMs, and then. Um, don't be afraid to play apart from your run and, and start harassing the backline as well. Um, so, like, yeah, like Zen and Ana are really, really prime targets for you to go harass. Uh, you can also just, you know, dive at one of their DPS, get in their face, start eating all their damage up, and then displace them, and it just takes them completely out of the fight. Uh, I think there was one situation here where I definitely would have gone after the Ana. Yeah, so, like right here, you see the on in the back left corner, right there. Alright, do you know where she is? I mean, you actually do try to rocket her. But right here, so right here, when your team's engaging, um, you've got Valk up, right? Your team, well, I mean, the Torb and, is ulting and everything, but here, instead of sticking with a team, I would have boosted up, um... I would have boosted up over to the left and taken up, gone up the high ground and tried to harass the Ana and get her to come like come off onto the low ground. Or you know, like even if you're just there and she tries to sleep dart you or nade you and you eat it, um, or just tank it, that's already so much value lost from this fight. Um, that it's worth it for you to go do that. So it's just little things like that. Uh that you could do on Diva and yet it's like taking the maximum advantage of her mobility. Uh, yeah, so I hope that this helped a little bit with um, your gameplay and that you learn stuff. And uh, yeah, let me know if you have any other um, thoughts for me to review.